I've seen a lot of people this week say it feels like Baltimore Ravens fans have sort of a victim complex. But when I think about it, uh, can you blame us? Especially with the latest news that came out. Again, something new about this AFC championship game. Because we talked about how the refs, they were in that funny business. We talked about Taylor Swift and her impact. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But then this... <laughs> like, really? Is it the Ravens versus the world or something like that? It seems like it because Eric Bieniemy, who was the offensive coordinator for the Washington Commanders, he was helping the Chiefs out. Still, still, still let, let's read the report. It said, this came from James Palmer TV. He said, Eric Bieniemy was in the Chiefs meetings before the AFC title game and spent some time with some offensive players. Some players have said they've missed EB. Nice to see him spend some time with them. I'm like, hold on, if this, this dude is employed by the commanders, but he's spending time with the Chiefs, but whoa, whoa, wait, it gets worse. Says, the Chiefs had, this is still from James Palmer TV, the Chiefs had it, former OC Eric Bieniemy actually get up in front of the offense the day before the AFC Championship game and speak to them and go through the install of a play. The inside scoop on EB's visit and its impact, my report on NFL Network. So... Eric B. Enemy, Washington Commander Eric B. Enemy, he went and over there helping the Chiefs design and come up and install plays? Like, really? Now, he did say the commanders gave Eric B. Enemy permission to do this, by the way. Still, still, like, wh what, how, why, again, when people say the whole victim complex thing with the right, this is what stuff like this is the reason, man. That's the reason. Because when you see stuff like that, it's like, really? How? It, w how is this even allowed to go down? When have you ever seen something like that before? And if y'all seen it before, hey, please let me know. I just don't recall. Like, I've seen times where a, a coach will get fired, and then they'll get picked up right away by a team that's in the playoffs. I've seen stuff like that. But Eric Bieni was not fired. He was not fired. He was let go days later. Or actually a week and a half later. But he was still employed by the Washington Commanders. So I just, it, 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 all this funny business. And then y'all saw what Roger Goodell said about Taylor Swift. Well, one of the things he said about Taylor Swift the other day. Let's just read it. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell said he went to two Taylor Swift concerts last year. I got no problem with that. But, uh, and he thinks her presence at games has opened the league up to a new set of fans. Having the Taylor Swift effect is positive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It wasn't in our cards this year it really, it really wasn't But hey Something that may possibly be in our cards for next year I did see a report that said Odell Beckham Jr. and Kim Kardashian They think about thinking about making their relationship public So if Odell Beckham Jr. does return to the Baltimore Ravens Then hey We got a shot Now I'm, I'm looking at the numbers now I'm looking at the numbers Taylor Swift got 95 million followers on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. Kim Kardashian, uh, she got 75 million. So she 20 million behind. But she's up there. She's up there. So she might give us that little extra push. Anyway, team, keep it clean. Um, <laughs> I love y'all. I really do. And um, we just uh, we got to laugh at a lot of the stuff, or a lot of this news that comes out. We just got to laugh at it because it's funny. It's painful. Especially when you think about how everything went down and you're like, mm, you ain't putting on no tinfoil hat or nothing, but mm, I don't know. But um, I appreciate y'all allowing us to express ourselves. I know y'all obviously express yourselves in the comment section about how y'all feel about all of this stuff that's been going down and all this news that's been coming out after the fact. But it is what it is. Um, but make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn your notifications on so you do not miss not one single video. And also leave a like on the video because it does help out with the channel a lot. Now, somebody who we've talked about on this channel a lot over the years has been Gregory Roman. g -Ro, our guy. Shout out to g -Ro. Uh And g -Ro, he is he does this thing where he goes to a new team. And the first two years that he's on that new team, those offenses are hot. They are just crushing it. They're killing it. They're taking over the league. But then in the third and fourth years, that's when things, they go downhill. And it seems like the offense is peak within that first two years. Uh, but Greg Roman, he's been with the 49ers, 
Greg Roman, he's also been with the Bills, and Greg Roman has, of course, been with the Baltimore Ravens, and we've seen a lot of the same stuff. But now, Greg Roman, hey, he's with the Hardballs yet again. Because Greg Roman, he has been hired to be the offensive coordinator of the Los Angeles Chargers. So, hey, we talk about it all the time. Hashtag Hood Hardball. If you are good with the Hallballs, stay good with the Hallballs because they will never leave you out to dry. They will always provide a job for you. Always, always. Um, but Greg Roman is their new offensive coordinator. So I know um, I, I've seen a lot of Ravens fans say, uh oh, well, I know Justin Herbert's going to be upset about that. But I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, at least the first year, the first two years, it should be straight. Um, but with Justin Herbert now, uh, with Greg Roman taking over the offense, I would expect his yardage to drop, his passing yards to drop. But I would expect his efficiency to stay up because that's one thing with Greg Roman's offense. In my opinion, so much about it is about efficiency, is getting the most out of it when you do actually pass the ball. We know it's based on the run. It's run, 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 run. They would run on fifth down if they had fifth downs. But um, when they do pass the ball in Greg Roman's offenses, it's efficient. Um, so we'll see what happens with Justin Herbert there. Um, but, yeah, Jim Harbaugh said, hey, I'm, I'm on it. I'm bringing all my boys with me. He even brought, uh, I think, a defensive coordinator. I want to say his name is Jesse Minter, but don't quote me on that. But I believe he brought a defensive coordinator who was defensive coordinator at Michigan, and now he's going to be the D.C. Uh, with the Chargers too. So, hey, that, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. That's what the game is. Hey, they, them hardballs, they put their people on. So with Greg Roman, it's going to be interesting to see how it works itself out with the offense. I, I expect them to do their thing, though. I expect them to do good. Now, um, for Justin Herbert's sake, you're going to want to hope that Greg Roman, he's changed some stuff up. But at the same time, can you teach an old dog new tricks? I think you can. I think you can, but in Greg Roman's case, is he willing to learn some new tricks, especially with the passing offense? We know one of the complaints about the passing offense was the lack of diversity in the passing offense, the lack of using all the weapons that you had in the passing offense, just a lack overall in the passing offense. I know a lot of people have talked about spacing issues over the years with the passing offense, just guys all being in the same area and whatnot, not being spread out and whatnot, guys just not having space, not using the entire field. I mean, we could go on about this for a long time because we went on about it for a long time with Greg Rowan, but we are happy to see him land on his feet. After taking some time off, because if y'all recall, Greg Roman, when him and the Baltimore Ravens, they agreed to mutually part ways. See, that's another thing with them hardballs. I don't know if Jim does it, but John certainly does it. If he loves you, if he got a lot of love for you as a person, as a coach, then he will not say we fired you. He'll say, oh, we, we decided to mutually part ways. He did it with Greg Roman. I'm pretty sure they did it with Wink Martindale, too. Um, they, they did, well, maybe Mink said he was, I mean, not Mink, Wink said he was stepping down. It was something, but he did not get fired. So, the, hey, them all, and I think he did it with, um, who was the offensive coordinator right before Greg Roman? Ah, uh, Marty Morningweg. I'm like 199% sure he did it with him too. Where he didn't say fired, but he said mutually parting of ways, or they allowed the coordinator to say, hey, I'm going to be stepping down from my role. And oh, yeah, 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 that's, that's what it was. Okay, I remember now. With Marty Morningweg, they offered him another position, but he turned it down. So then that allowed him to exit and still not stain his resume. That's what. That's what it was. I remember now. I remember now. Ooh, John Harbaugh, you slick, man. But, hey, you put your people on and you put them in good positions to continue to have success even after they leave the Baltimore Ravens. So I respect it. So, yeah, with Greg Roman, that's what happened with him. It was a mutual part of the ways, uh, and it doesn't make him look bad. But I remember when he said that he was going to take some time off. He was going to take some time off from the league. and um, Because before, before he was going to take time off, he had interviewed for that Stanford job. Y'all remember that? And then there was a report that said, oh, Greg Roman was in the runnings to become the head coach. Uh, uh, yeah, it was Stanford, I believe. And we were all like, oh, okay. Well, hey, get Greg. Get g Row. He's about to go to Stanford and be a head coach over there. Okay, shout out to him. But then I believe, I want to say Jason Garrett or somebody else ended up getting the job in g Row. 
he didn't get it. So it was like, oh. So when he said that he was going to take some time off, I just I thought personally that it, maybe it was because nothing ended up working out for him and um there was a lack of interest in a Greg Roman. But hey, in the long run, he got to be patient. He got to take his time off and now it works out for him cuz he's back and he's an offensive coordinator in the NFL. Not a assistant, not a QB coach, wide receiver coach, run game coordinator. No, he is the offensive coordinator. So Greg Roman got a prominent role in the NFL yet again. And who is it from? Shout out to them Hall Bros.